Greetings all and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. Let's take a closer look at the Crochet Mason Jar Cozies pattern. Now we offered it to you in three sizes and here's what you're going to need to make the project. First off, of course, you're going to need the pattern. Then you're going to need a mason jar. Now we have the pattern in three different sizes, so you pick the one that looks like it will fit the jar that you have. I'm gonna go ahead and make the large one. You need one ball of Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. In the photograph on the pattern, we used indigo, sage, and jute, but of course you can use whatever color you happen to have or whichever color fits best into your home decor. And of course, a crochet hook. We recommend a size F5, which is 3.75 millimeter. Personally, I went up to a four millimeter because I found I got the gauge a little more neatly, but you can start with the one recommended in the pattern and make an adjustment if you have to. Now, for all three sizes, the first five rounds are the same. So let me clear the decks and we'll get started crocheting the base. So we're going to begin with the base. Now on the pattern, the largest mason jar was made in the indigo color of the yarn, but I'm going to use the jute on camera because it's much easier for you to see stitch definition in a lighter color. So here's the base of the small mason jar and you can see that we're working in rounds from the center out. No matter which size you're making, the first five rounds are the same. One, two, three, four, five. So they're the same for all. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and make the large size, but I'm making it in the jute yarn. Now, if you look at the base of the large one, and you can see what I mean about stitch definition being difficult to see in the indigo, you see the one, two, three, four, five rounds, and then there's a few more. So following the pattern, I'm going to make these five rounds where it says all versions. And then at the end of the fifth round, I'm going to switch over to the pattern for the large version and it says sixth, seventh, and eighth round. So the base is bigger for the larger sizes. But let's take a look at these first couple of rounds. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is put a slip stitch on my hook. I'm going to chain two, one, two, and again, I'm working a little more loosely than you might. It's so that you at home can see what I'm doing. So, instructions, chain two, first round, six single crochet in second chain from hook, Join with slip stitch to first SC. So I'm going to the first, second chain from hook, and I like to work under two legs of the chain so it's nice and sturdy. And I'm going to put six single crochet in that spot. All right, let's see if I can get set up here. And I'm going to go ahead and work over the tail. It's not mandatory, but it just makes it a little tighter later. So there's one. Two. Oops, I picked up the tail there, didn't need to do that. Three, and you can see as I'm working around now, it looks like I'm working just under the one leg, but I got started under two legs of the chain to make sure it was nice and sturdy and that I could see that hole. Five, six. Now I have to join the round with a slip stitch in the first single crochet, which is over here because the chain ones do not count. Sometimes on the first round, it's hard to see where that very first single crochet is. So sometimes I like to count backwards so I can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can see it's way back here. All right, so I'm going to join the round I want to get my hook under both legs of the stitch with a slip stitch, which as you know is yarn over, pull through everything. So there's round one. Let's go to round two, chain one, two single crochet in each stitch. Now we're going to start with that stitch where the round join was because that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. So the first stitch we're going to work into is the same SC as the round join was in. So there's two and then I'm going to put two SC in each stitch and join that round with a slip stitch in the first single crochet and that is going to give me 12 stitches in the round because I had six and I put two in each. Two, 
and we want a nice tight stitch so that the item holds its shape. All right, so there's my 12 stitches in round two, and I can see very easily where that first single crochet is, but again, if you can't, feel free to count back. I'm going to join the round with a slip stitch. At the beginning of round one, I'm going to chain one, and the instructions say single crochet in next single crochet, two single crochet in next single crochet. I'm going to do that all the way around. But remember, I'm going to put that first stitch in that very first single crochet because the chain one does not count. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish the five rounds at the beginning of the base that all of the versions need. Then I'm going to page two and I'm going to work round six, seven, and eight, which is in the same manner. And then I will meet you back here and we'll get started on the body. So here I am at the end of round five. And since I'm making the large, I'm moving on to round six, seven, eight under the large version. I wanted to point out that as I got a little bigger and I have more stitches in my round and I'm getting enormously tired of counting stitches, I'm going to switch to a locking stitch marker to uh, designate the beginning of my round. So on the sixth round, chain one, single crochet in each of next four. So one, once I finish that very first one, I'm going to put my locking stitch marker in there. And now I know that that is the first stitch of the round. Um, just when you're working in single crochet predominantly, it's easier to see the beginning of the round when it's marked. And it's one thing to count when you have six stitches in the round. It's an entirely different matter when you have 36 stitches in the round. So I'm going to finish six, seven, and eight and meet you back here. Now, here we are coming up at the end of round eight of the large version. And as you can see, it is single crochet in back loop only, which gives us that little ridge. So I just wanted to give you a tiny refresher on that. Remember, I tension my yarn a little differently than many of you do. It's not a big deal. You tension your yarn the way you do. So see, I'm still working on the back loop. And that's giving me that little ridge. You might also notice that it's starting to pull up a little bit, what we call cupping. And that's fine that it's cupping. The reason it's cupping is because there's no more increases at that point. So it will lay flat until you get to that single crochet back loop only round and then it's going to start to turn itself up but that's exactly what we want it to do so that's fine so at the end of round eight join with that first single crochet and that's the end of round eight so now the next thing it says so reading the patterns for the large Repeat from double star to double star as given for small version over 42 stitches. So that's back here. So we're going to do the beginning of the small version, which is chain four, which counts as one double crochet and a chain one. Skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch. We're gonna do that all the way around, joining the round with a slip stitch in the third chain of the chain four at the beginning. So let's take a look at how that looks. I'm not worried about my stitch marker anymore because since this is now going to be a double crochet round, I can absolutely see where the beginning is. So let's start with chain four. One, two, three, four. So it counts as a double crochet in a chain one. So this first stitch where we already joined, this guy counts as that one, right? So it says skip next stitch, so that skipping next stitch is the first empty one, and double crochet in the next stitch. So we're in here, we're going to skip that one, we're going to double crochet in this one. All right, chain one. Skip next stitch, that's this empty guy, double crochet in next stitch. And we're going to do that all the way around, 
until we get to the end of the round. So I'm going to turn the camera off because we're going to repeat the same thing over and over again. And then I will come back and show you how to join this round. Okay, we're coming up at the end of the first round of the body. And I've been doing my double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet, chain one, skip one. So I'm here to the end. I put my last double crochet in. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip that last one. And then it says join round with slip stitch in third chain of chain four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and join right in here. So that's the third chain up. Once again, I like to go under two legs of the chain so it's nice and sturdy, but one is fine too. So that is the end of the first round of the body. Moving on to the second round, it says chain one, single crochet in each stitch around, joined with slip stitch to first single crochet. So, since that chain one doesn't count for anything, my first single crochet is going to go in that same third chain because remember that chain four counted as a double crochet. So in the space, in the stitch, all the way around. Now, if you're reading along on the small version, it says you'll have 30 stitches, but since we were making the large, we will have 42. So we're going to go all the way around. So there's a single crochet in every double and in every space. Then we're going to join that round with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. Once again, I don't feel strongly that I need a locking stitch marker here. I think it's going to be pretty easy to see because it's on top of a double crochet round. So let me get to the end of this round and then we'll take a look at the next one. Okay, here we are coming up at the end of the second round of the body. And once again, I'm putting a single crochet in each chain space and a single crochet in each double crochet. And I'm coming up to the end, which is going to finish with a chain space because my first stitch was in that very first double. I'm going to join the round with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. So that's the end of the second round. Now, moving on to the third round, it says chain five counts as double crochet and chain two. So one, two, three, four, five, Chain five. Skip next two stitches. So since this counts as a double crochet, that very first one is occupied. We're going to skip the next two empty ones. One, two, single crochet in next stitch. So we'll put a single crochet in there. Chain two. One, two. Skip next two, so skip the two empty ones. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, which is also called a V stitch in this stitch. So it's going to be double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the same spot, in the same stitch. Okay, so there's my V stitch right there. Chain two, repeat from the asterisk, which is skip next two stitches, one, two, single crochet in next stitch, chain two, one, two, skip next two, one, two, V stitch in the next one. Okay, so we have our singles are way down here and our V-stitches are way up there. Uh, so it says repeat from asterisk or star to last five stitches. Skip next two, single crochet in next stitch. Skip two, skip last two stitches. Double crochet, chain two in same space as beginning chain. 
and join with a slip stitch to the third chain of chain five. So how about I'll go around to the end of round three and I'll show you that join. I'll be right back. All right, I'm coming up at the end of the third round of the body and I have five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five. The last repeat of the asterisk ended with a chain two, so I've done that already. So I've come up to the last five stitches, skip next two, one, two, single crochet in next stitch, which we're doing right now. Chain two, one, two, skip the last two stitches, which are these guys, one, two. Now double crochet, chain two, and we want to do it in the same spot as where that beginning chain was. So there's a double, chain two, and we're going to join round, oops, I split my yarn. We're going to join round within the third chain of that beginning chain four. So one, two, three. I'm sorry, it was a beginning chain five. So we're joining in the third stitch of the beginning chain five. And then what that does is that makes that look like a V stitch. So I'm alternating V stitches and single crochets all the way around. Okay, let's take a look at the beginning of the fourth round. It says chain three, one, two, three. So that's the beginning of the round. Then it says DCL chain one three times in the chain two space of the next V stitch. So my next V stitch is way over here. So let's look at the abbreviations for DCL and see what we're going to do. Now those abbreviations are on the first page of the pattern. So it says yarn over hook, that's what YOH means, yarn over hook and draw up a loop. Yarn over hook and draw through two loops on hook three times in indicated stitch or space. Yarn over hook and draw through four loops on hook. So all of those actions are one DCL. So let's I'm going to cheat. I'm going to have all my pattern stuff here so that we say it all correctly. So we chained three. We're going to DCL and chain one three times. You know what? It's very difficult for you to see with the picture behind it. So I would strongly suggest you put the pattern in front of you, but I'm going to move it off camera so you can see. So let's DCL one time. So to DCL one time, it's yarn over hook and draw up a loop and it told us to work in the chain two space of the V so that's where I'm drawing up a loop. Yarn over hook, draw through two loops on hook. Three times, so let's do it again. Yarn over hook, draw up a loop through the stitch. Yarn over hook and draw through two. Third time, yarn over hook, insert it in that stitch. Yarn over hook and bring it through. Yarn over hook and bring through two. So I did that three times. And then the last piece of the instruction is yarn over hook and draw through four loops on hook. So you can see I have four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to yarn over and bring it through all four. That is one DCL. And my instructions say DCL chain one three times into the same space. So that's one chain one. Now I'm going to do the second DCL. So yarn over hook, yarn over, pull it through the chain two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over hook, yarn over, bring it through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over hook, go through the stitch, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through two. How do I know that I've done enough? I have four. One, two, three, four yarn over, pull it through the whole ball game, all through all four loops, and then I'm going to chain one. That is my second DCL. Now we're going to make the third DCL yarn over. All right, so the DCL has three actions, but we're going to make each DCL three times. That's a lot of stitching in a little space, but it's going to spread out when we put the jar in. 
How do I know I'm done? One, two, three, four. That's how. Through all four, and now I'm going to chain one. Right? Because it was DCL chain one, DCL chain one, DCL chain one. And now it says repeat from asterisk or star to the last V stitch. So I'm going to do this all the way around. I'm skipping all of this and I'm going into the next V stitch. So here's my next DCL. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, yarn over, pull through four. That's one DCL, chain one. Two more DCLs in the same spot, chain one, move on to the next one. So I'm going to do that all the way around till I get to the very last V stitch, which is over here. And then I'm going to come back and do that round join on camera. All right, coming up to the end of the fourth round of the body pattern, we have this last V stitch, which also has this uh, chain kind of hanging out on the end and that's why it's different. So following the instructions, we're going to DCL chain one two times in that chain two space instead of three times like we've been doing. So one, two, three, that's one cluster, one, two, three, four, yarn over, pull it through all, chain one, one more cluster, one, two, three, four loops on the hook, finish my cluster, chain one. So I did two clusters in chain one. Now it says, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two loops on hook twice instead of three times like we'd been doing. So this is sort of a piece of a cluster. Yarn over and draw through three loops on hook. See, I've only got three. So I'm going to yarn over and draw through all three. Join the round with slip stitch to top of chain three. So there's one, two, three at the beginning. I'm going to do my slip stitch there. And because that chain three has pulled into this, even though I only had two repeats on that last cluster, it looks like all the other ones. So that's the end of the fourth round. So let's go back to the pattern. Because if you see at the end of the fourth round of the body, there's our double asterisk. So over here on the large version, it said, repeat from double asterisk to double asterisk as given for the small overall 42 stitches. So we did that. Now it says, repeat first to fourth rounds of body pattern twice more. So we're going to go back to round one of the body pattern which is chain four counts as double crochet and chain, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch, chain one. We're gonna do that all the way around. Let's actually take a look at that because that's gonna be a little different because we're working on these cluster stitches and chain stitches instead of on the single crochets that we were the first time this round came up. So let's chain four, one, two, three, four, skip next stitch, which I'm going to go for that being a cluster, double crochet in next stitch, which is that chain one. Chain one. Skip next stitch. The next stitch is going to be the top of that cluster. Double crochet in the chain one. Chain one, skip the cluster. The next chain is way over here between the two triple clusters. Okay, so we're gonna do that all the way around, remembering that no matter how many times we yarned over and pulled up here, that's still, it's got one double loop at the top, so that is one stitch. So it looks to me like all our double crochets are going to wind up between clusters and let's take a look at our sample here to make sure that I have said that correctly and I have. If you look at this, let's look at the jute one instead of the indigo one. If you look at this you can see 
that those double crochets that we're putting in now are coming up before between the DCL stitches and between the groups of DCL stitches. So we're going to do that all the way around and then we're going to keep going. Repeating that uh, one, two, three, four, two more times for the large. Now, the other thing I want to say, since we are at the point where we have basically finished a four row repeat, I would like you to take the jar that you have and slide it in there and make sure it fits because you don't want to keep going and going and going and then find out that your stitching is too small for your jar. So there's a certain amount of flexibility. This jar that I'm using on camera is not the exact same jar as uh, the Spinrite design team made when they made the first one. But close enough is close enough. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> Nobody's going to complain that it doesn't fit. It's just a mason jar. But take a look at this point and make sure the stitching that you're doing is going to fit comfortably over the mason jar that you have. It's okay if it pulls tight, it'll be a nice snug fit, but you wanna make sure you can actually get the jar in there before you go too much farther. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to finish rounds five to 12, which is repeating one through four of the body two times, then on round 13, I'm going to repeat that uh, first round, which is the one that we just did. And then without breaking yarn, place the jar inside the cozy. So I'm going to get through the end of the 13th round. Then I'm going to join you back here and we're going to put the little collar on the top so that it stays in place. All right. Just one quick note I noticed as I'm working along. The sections of clusters do not line up completely vertically, they stagger. I actually prefer that, I think it looks really nice. Uh, but the reason it does that is because as we're stitching along, mechanically the beginning of the round is shifting ever so slightly to the left. So I don't want you to look at this and think, oh holy cats, my uh, clusters have to line up. They don't. When we get up to that last repeat, they'll line back up with this one. So it's going to be here and then over here and then back up here. And that's the way the pattern's written. Don't freak out. I'll catch you again at the end of round 13. All right, here I am at the end of the 13th round of the large size. And it says, without breaking yarn, place jar inside cozy. So basically what's gonna happen here is I have to get the jar inside the crochet so that I can tighten up the collar so the stinking thing doesn't fall off. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend is that you pull the loop way out so that when you're fiddling around trying to get part A into part B, you don't unravel any of your stitching. You could also use your locking stitch marker right there. So I'm going to take my jar and I'm going to slide it into the cozy. I'm going to make sure that the crochet comes all the way to the top. Now, my jar is a tad bit shorter than the original jar was. But basically, no matter where I'm doing it, I want to pull this in so it's tight around the top of the jar. If you look at the original large one, you can see that their stitching ended a little lower down than mine did. But regardless, what we want to do is to pull this in. So working with the jar inside the crochet, let me see if I can find my original loop. I'm going to put that back on the hook. Now the instructions say single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Well, we're going to chain one for the start of the round. And then it's a single crochet in each of the next three stitches, skip one, etc., all the way around. So what you're essentially doing is pulling it in tight enough so that it's tight around the collar. Now, if you have to decrease a couple extra or decrease a couple less, to fit your own personal jar, that is totally fine because again, once once we get here, it's just single crochet from here on out, so the stitch count does not matter. So while the instructions are telling me to stitch three, skip one, stitch three, skip one, I'm thinking for this jar, because it's a little more narrow, I might have to skip more than that. I might have to skip two, uh, stitch two and skip one, so let's try that. But what I want is the single crochet to pull in tight around the collar. So if you have the exact same jar 
that the designers did at the fabulous Yarnspirations design team who made it, that stitch three skip one is going to work fine for you. Since my jar is a little tighter, a little smaller, I'm going to stitch two and skip one. So you can see that the stitching is starting to pull up tight around the collar of the jar. And that's exactly what we want. So very, very rarely will I tell you to differentiate from what the instructions are telling you, what the written instructions are telling you. But this is one of those places where a little improvisation is not gonna hurt you and may make you happier with your project in the long run. So you can see I'm working way all the way around. Once you have the collar as tight as it needs to be, essentially the final two rounds are single crochet in each stitch around end off, and then all you have to do is weave in your tail. Now, if you're like me and you're stitching around and you think that it might need to go a little tighter after this round, and again, this is round 14 of the large, it is completely okay to put a couple decreases on the next round if you need to, but likely you won't need to. I'm really trying to get all of my decreasing done at the very beginning and make this nice and snug and tight so it does not fall down when I'm using it for decoration. I think we're doing a pretty fine job here. I'm almost to the beginning of the round and like all the other single crochet rounds, I'm going to join it with a slip stitch in the first single crochet and chain one to start the next round. And once again, if you want to use a locking stitch marker, that is a totally fine thing. So let's see, there's the beginning of my round, chain one. And I'm gonna pull this out because I wanna see what I'm doing. Now this looks tight enough to me. I really feel like I got enough decreasing done that, that that is going to sit nice. I don't really feel like I need to do any more decreasing and probably you won't either, but I wanna make sure that you can arrange things the way you want to when you're done. So all I'm going to do now is put two more rounds of single crochet and then I'm gonna cut the yarn, end it off and weave it in inside the single crochet. Let's take a look one more time at some of our finished samples. Here's the small one, which only has, remember, just the five rounds of the base and then one repeat of these uh, of the fancy stitch pattern. And then this one doesn't pull in so much at the top. So if you look at those instructions, you're not gonna see so much decreasing. Then we have the medium one, slightly larger base two repeats of the fancy stitching. And like I said, you can see that the cluster stitches stagger, which I like, and a little bit of pulling in at the collar because you need it so it doesn't fall down. And then if you look at the large one, much larger base, three repeats, one, two, three of the fancy stitching and some serious decreasing at the top to make sure it doesn't fall down. So I hope you have a wonderful time making your crochet mason jar cozies. These make terrific, terrific gifts, and it's really easy to whip them up in a number of colors so you can use them in any room of your house. Thanks so much for joining us here on Yarnspirations.com. I look forward to seeing you again soon. <music>